uh, today we'll start with uh, bash uh, scripting. Uh, a script uh, is just a bunch of uh, commands. Uh, there are some uh, complex commands as well, but uh, uh, basically it is a bunch of commands. Let, let's start with a basic skill that uh, a script that uh, prints hello world. I, I will use Vim as an editor. If you are familiar with Nano or some other editor, you can use that one. But so usually we give the extension .sh for, for the shell shell script but it doesn't matter actually because uh, the extension is not important in uh, Linux uh, files actually so uh, I will use the command echo Oops. I can quit let's see it, it has one command for for the time being and now to execute uh, this script uh, i can uh, send i can uh, pipe it to uh, to the bash and it will execute it or uh, i can call bash uh, with argument hello.sh and again it will execute it but uh there, there is a, a better way uh at the beginning, at the top of the file, we can define a uh, shebang. Uh, this is this is uh, hash. Uh, this is called hash, and uh, this is called bang usually, and this is called sh uh, shebang. And so uh, the command that comes after the shebang. Uh, tells the shell how to interpret uh, this uh, script or how to execute this script. So it is uh, the same as uh, calling uh, this program and uh, passing the script, uh, the script file as an argument. And now uh, let's try to, uh, to execute it. But first uh, we should make it executable. So we see it does not, it does not have the uh, execution permission. Now it is executable. And uh, we can try to execute it. But it says uh, command not found. What is going on? Uh, when we give some command to uh, to the shell, it looks for this command at some certain uh, paths, and these paths are, are listed on the environment variable path. So in this uh, in this variable, there are some directories separated by semicolon, and shell uh, looks at each of them for the command that we are typing in in, the, in this case it is uh, this command and it cannot find it in uh, in any of these directories and so uh, the error message command not found but uh, we can either uh, add uh, the current di directory to, to the path and then it will find it or we can uh, we can give explicitly a path to to this program let's let's try the first method first This is a current directory, print working directory, and then sem uh, semicolon, and then the content of uh, the variable path. Let's check it. So uh, we see that uh, now it will look at, at this uh, directory for, for the commands, which is the current directory. And in this case, it, it can find it. Uh, but we can also give explicitly a path to the program. The path that we are uh, giving to it is current directory dot slash. So in case we give a path, then uh, the shell is not going to look at these directories, but will just look at the given path. What is 
threatening uh, or, uh, when we execute this command is that uh, it looks at the uh, beginning of the file, it finds a shared bank, then it will call this, uh, this program and will pass this as, uh, as an argument. And uh, this is how it is executed. The same way it works, for example, for a Python script or uh, for a Perl script, etc., Ravi, etc. Uh, as an example, we will start a small project, and this project will be to, to build a script that to write a script that builds an HTML page with some uh, uh, statistics about the system. Um, in, in this directory, user local local uh, examples uh, is, uh, a template uh, HTML. Is a very basic HTML page. I'm copying it to the current directory. So it is uh, just a ba basic HTML. It has a title and then just an empty body. Uh, we will uh, write a script that generates this HTML page. Uh, first of all, let's copy it to. Uh, To, to script file. Now I will edit it to convert it to a script that generates this page. So uh, in this range, from the first line to the to the last line, uh, I am executing this uh, this command substitute. This is a beginning of file. At the beginning of file, uh, I, it will write uh, this echo and uh, and the quote. And uh, again, from the first line to the last line, substitute. This dollar is end of line. At the end of line, it will replace the end of line with uh, with a quote. And so uh, we have now echo this echo the second line. Oops. Echo the third line and, and so on. Now to convert it uh, again to a script, we add a shared bank being bash. This is a comment. You guess it. Uh, if a line starts uh, with a hash, uh, it is a comment. Actually, whatever comes after hash is a comment. For example, uh, comment. Sorry, uh, it is a comment. Whatever comes after a hash is a comment. Let's, let's try to execute it. Mission denied because uh, it is not executable. Add the execute uh, permission. And it will print all these lines. 
and uh, it, is, it is printing on standard output actually. So to collect the output, we can redirect it to a file. And now uh, we can open this uh, HD, uh, this HTML file in browser. Uh, it can be Firefox, for example, but it can also be a, a command line or terminal browser. There are several uh, terminal browsers. We can use, for example, uh, Linux. So this is the page title, and uh, this is the page body, and that's it. Now to quit, uh, I press Q and then Y, yes. Actually, uh, this uh, command echo, uh, is using these uh, double quoted uh, strings, but uh, double quoted strings can also uh, include uh, new lines uh, inside. So they can contain new lines inside. So it is not necessary to print uh, all the lines one by one uh, like this. Let, let's try to make this script a little bit uh, simpler and more, a bit more clear. I will replace this uh, quote at the end of line with uh, nothing. Also, let me clear this one. And I can uh, type, uh, I can use a single echo and open the string here and uh, close the string here. And this is a little bit uh, clear, more clear and simpler uh, than the first version. Okay. Now let's start uh, to put some uh, data on the report. Here the title uh, can be And again, here uh, at the body, we can have a uh, header H1. Which is the same as, as the title. Now, uh, we are repeating the same uh, information, the same string twice. And uh, usually this is not uh, recommended because if we need to maintain to change something, then we have changed uh, it in multiple places. So we can use a variable uh, to, uh, to eliminate this uh, repetition. Let's create a var variable call, called title. And uh, we give we give it a value of this string system informa information report. And here we can just place the variable. Uh, 
And now we have uh, the information only in one place. And if uh, we change it here, then it will be changed uh, everywhere that uh, the variable is, is called. Let, let's try it. Let's skip. It is okay. Now, uh, as you see, a variable in a bar script is used uh, straightforward. Uh, we don't have to declare it, we just uh, use it. We give it a value here and uh, we uh, get its value here. So when we uh, get the value, actually th this is a shell expansion. We have a string here uh, and uh, this string will be uh, processed by the shell before being executed and the shell will uh, expand uh, the variables inside, in, inside the string. So uh, when we give a value, we don't use the dollar and then an equal sign and then uh, uh, the value, which is a string in this case. And usually, even if we uh, type a number, then it will be treated as, as a string. Uh, and to, to get the value or to expand the, the variable, uh, we use the dollar sign in front of its name. We can do the same from the command line as well. For example, give the value uh, yes as a string to the variable foo and then uh, we show the value with uh, the command echo. And uh, as I said, uh, this is expanded by the shell. So actually uh, this command is the same as uh, typing echo yes, because uh, this value is replaced by the shell with uh, this variable is uh, replaced by the shell with uh, its value. Uh, if we type, for example, echo foo one. So the shell uh, tries tries to find this variable. It does not find it and uh, it silently uh, gives it an empty value. And uh, it, uh, it is the same as, as typing echo and nothing. Uh, so empty string. Uh, sometimes uh, this can be uh, a problem, especially uh, if we mis uh, misspell a variable. So if we if we type the name of the variable correctly, then it will get the value of the variable. But if we type it wrongly, if we misspell it, then uh, the bash uh, the shell will not complain. It will just assign an empty string to it, and it, it can be a problem sometimes. For example, let's see a case like this. We create an empty file. Now, Suppose that we want to, to copy this file to another one. Uh, or let, let's create another variable foo one. Suppose that I misspell this uh, variable. Instead of typing full one, uh, I type full. Now, what happens? Uh, the the command copy gives an error. Why? Because uh, this is replaced to the to the value of a variable, which is full dot text. But uh, this variable is misspelled, so uh, it will be replaced by an empty string. So this command actually is the same as the command. 
cp for dot text, which is the value of the first variable, and then an empty string. And so uh, this command expects two arguments and it gives an error. Usually to, to denote the constants, the variables that are assigned only, only once and then uh, they are not changed. Uh, by convention, we use uppercase uh, variables. Uh, for example, this title here uh, may be considered as a constant because it does not change. We uh, give it a value at the beginning and then we just use its value. So uh, to, to show that it is a constant, by convention, we use uh, a variable in uppercase. Inside the, the value of the title, let, let's use another uh, variable. This uh, host name is an environment uh, variable, and uh, environment variables also are cons considered considered as a constant, they, they don't change usually. And so uh, they are in uppercase. So uh, host name has the value uh, Linux training and uh, it has been uh, replaced. But there is also uh, a way to make sure that uh, it really does not change. A variable uh, really does not change. And we can do it like this. So this declare uh, is used to declare a variable, but this option R uh, means it is read only. So it is a constant and it does not change. When a value is assigned to a variable, uh, there should be uh, no spaces uh, around the equal sign, uh, around the equal sign. For example, in this case, this is converted to a string and the value of uh, this variable uh, is a string. Another example. We are using uh, another variable inside the string and uh, shell will expand it before giving uh, the value to, uh, to this variable.
we have a command uh, substitution. So uh, it will execute a command and will give the output of the command as the value uh, to the variable. So the shell will execute this command and whatever is the output of this command will be passed uh, to, to this variable. This is an arithmetic ex expansion. So the value inside the uh, inside the parentheses uh, will be considered as an arithmetic expression, will be evaluated as an arithmetic expression. Uh, this is uh, this slash t uh, is for tab, and also this one and uh, slash n is uh, for the end of line or a uh, new line. Let, let's try this one. In this case, these are not replaced. Uh, they, these are considered as literal uh, characters. Uh, in order to replace them. Uh, we should use the uh, the option E. So echo with option E. And now slash T is interpreted as a tab and uh, slash N is interpreted as the new line or end of line. So this option E enable uh, interpretation of the following backslash uh, uh, escapes. And uh, there are these uh, backslash escapes that are listed here. Uh, during expansion, a variable may be uh, enlisted with uh, with curly braces like this. It is the same as typing like this, but uh, in some cases it is uh, necessary to uh, use this uh, curly braces. For example, let's say So we, we have created this uh, file, but we want to copy or to move this one to uh, to a file named my file one. And uh, let, let's try this this command. does not work. Uh, why? Uh, the same uh, example that we saw before. Uh, this file name one is interpreted as the name of the variable and there is no such variable file name one with this name. And so this is replaced with an empty string. And so the, the command move fails because it needs two arguments. Uh, we can modify or we can correct this command uh, like this. Now that uh, we are using curly braces, uh, shell knows that this is the, the name of the variable and uh, this is appended to the name of the variable. This one is appended uh, to, the, uh, to the value of the variable. So this is expanded. Uh, one is not expanded, it remains as, as it is. And now uh, we have moved from uh, from my file 
to uh, my my file one. Now it works. Let's add some uh, more data to the uh, report, uh, to the HTML report that we are uh, generating. Uh, we will use some commands. Uh, for example, date to get a timestamp. Time So we will use uh, this command to get a timestamp and we will embed this timestamp in the report, in the HTML report that we are generating. Uh, we will also use the shell, uh, the environment variable user. So this variable uh, contains the, the name of the currently uh, logged in user, this one. The username. Uh, let, let's uh, let's declare uh, another constant. Uh, we get the output of this command and uh, store it to this variable current time. Then we create another variable. And uh, we can add we can add this variable uh, below the the title. Let's check it. Works. Now we will see another uh, important uh, way of uh, outputting uh, text. Uh, or sending uh, sending text to a command, sending input to a command. It is called here document. Uh, let, let's see by by an example. Instead of uh, using this echo and a string after it, uh, we can use a here document uh, like this.
exactly the same output. Now, how does it work? Uh, after after this uh, operator, uh, we uh, we we uh, write uh, a token, and uh, then all all the lines that follow it will be passed as uh, input to to this command. Uh, will be passed uh, as input uh, to, to this command. And uh, it will continue until it finds the token again. And the token in this case has to be uh, at the beginning of the line and no uh, trailing, uh, no other spaces after it, no trailing spaces. So uh, all, all the lines uh, until the, the token, which, is, uh, which uh, tells that this is the end of input, will be, will be passed uh, as standard input to to this command, and cut in this case whatever uh, it does, whatever it gets in standard it input, it uh, it sends it to the standard output. And uh, so this is a, a a convenient way to to print this text. Now, uh, why this is uh, better than echo? Uh, it is better because uh, here we can uh, it, it can include anything. For example, double quotes, single quotes. Uh, if we, we use echo, we have to uh, include the string either in single quotes or in double quotes. And if there are quotes inside the, the string, then we have to escape them and so on. But uh, here, uh, Shell does not uh, interpret the quotes uh, as special char characters. It interprets them as literal characters. So we can use quotes freely uh, inside this text. And again, uh, it also expands, the Shell expands the variables. Uh, by default, there are ways to prevent uh, expanding uh, of uh, variables, uh, but we'll we'll see that. Uh, le let's try an example with quotes uh, on the command line. Now this is the second prompt. Uh, the input or, uh, or the command is not finished. Uh, so it is uh, waiting un until the end of uh, input. And uh, the token will, will signal the end of input uh, if uh, we pass the token again at the end. So let me cancel it. Sir. Then the document operator, the token, and then I type the variable foo. Uh, again, the variable foo, but in double quotes. And try it again in single quotes. And let's try this time by escaping the dollar uh, character. And let, let's give the, the token to end the input. So uh, after the end of input, then cut will uh, display whatever it gets uh, from the here document. And uh, what it gets is it will replace uh, the shell will expand this variable. The shell will expand this variable again. Uh, and the quotes will be treated as literal uh, characters, no special meaning. Uh, again, uh, for single quotes, the same. And uh, here, if uh, we type slash uh, dollar, then it is treated as, as, uh, as a normal uh, dollar character. It is not uh, expanded as a variable. So uh, if uh, we want to prevent the expansion of uh, variables, then we can, we can and close the, the token in quotes, either single quotes or double quotes. Uh, let's, let's try it again. Uh, I press the up arrow to, to get the previous command. I press control A to go to the start of the command. And uh, now I will modify the token by in, uh, enclosing it in double quotes. 
And since we enclosed it in double quotes, then uh, these variables are not uh, expanded by the shell. Uh, these double quotes prevent the expansion of uh, variable. And it is the same thing for single quotes. Again, uh, this dollar foo is treated as uh, literal uh, dollar and then uh, literal text. It is not uh, expanded as a variable by the shell. These documents can be used with any uh, command that accepts uh, standard input. Uh, for example, it can be used with a command like FTP. Uh, there is an example uh, here, uh, user local example. Let's see this uh, FTP one dot sh. So this is a step to retrieve a file via FTP. And we have some uh, variables or constants uh, declared here, FTP server, FTP path, uh, remote file. And uh, here we start the FTP command and uh, we give this input in standard, in standard input. These are, uh, these are FTP commands. If we try it manually, then we uh, we would type uh, these commands uh, one by one manually. But uh, we can pass uh, we can pass this command to the standard input of this command uh, of uh, FTP. And so uh, this is the token. Here is the uh, end of input to, to this command. Uh, let's try it. So this this is a good way to automate uh, things. Instead of typing those commands manually, we can include them uh, in a script. Let me try to, to install FTP. So uh, it has downloaded it. Is it is this one? Uh, now uh, let's see this uh, second example, which is the same as the first one, but uh, with a small uh, modification. Now what is uh, different? Uh, this uh, the here operator has uh, a minus uh, here, uh, this character uh, at the end. And if it has the here operator, if it has this character at the end, it means that uh, the tabs before these lines are ignored. So if there are any uh, tabs uh, before this command, uh, they will be ignored. And uh, this is useful to, uh, to make uh, an, a nice indentation of, uh, of the file. So in this case, it is clear that these commands are uh, commands or sub commands of, of this one. These are not uh, standalone commands in, in this uh, script. And e everything else is, is the same. Here we can use any token, also any token. Uh, so this has to be the same as this one, it has to be identical. But let's try the second one as well. Uh, it is possible that these are not uh, tabs. Let, let's correct it. And these are empty spaces. It has to be tabs because it uh, ignores uh, only the tabs.
now it works. Now we will see uh, the functions. Uh, there, there is a, a simple function in this uh, test uh, file or test script. So uh, a function can be declared like uh, like this. Function name of the function. Uh, and this this parentheses here uh, are not necessary in this case. And here, uh, this is the main program or the main script. We echo step one, then we call uh, this function step step two, which uh, prints or echoes step two, and then echo step three. Let's try. Another way to declare functions uh, is uh, like this. In this case, uh, th these are required. Uh, we, we don't type the keyword function. Uh, we just type the name of the function and then uh, followed by uh, by parentheses. Uh, I prefer this uh, this way or of writing functions because it seems to me uh, shorter or more compact. But they are identical. It, it is the same. The same thing. Inside the function, we can use local variables. The variables that uh, we have seen so far uh, are global variables, but inside the function, we can declare local variable and use local, local variable. This is an example that uses local variable. So we declare this variable foo and give it the, this value zero. And uh, by default, this is a glo global variable. And inside uh, function func1, uh, we declare a lo local variable with uh, this keyword local. Then we give another value, but this value is to the local variable. It does not modify the value of the global one. Uh, again, the same thing for the second function. And in the end, we show the value of the global variable, then we call the first function, and then we show again the value of the global variable to, to show that it has not been modified. Uh, what was modified here, the function, foo, uh, the variable foo that was modified here was the, the local uh, variable. So the global one is zero, uh, the local one is one, but the global one is again zero, it has not been modified. And then the local one in the second function is two, and still the global variable is uh, is zero. Now, what happens if, uh, if uh, we don't use this, uh, this local uh, declaration here? For example, let's remove it from the first function. Now, the, this foo is the global one, so it will modify the global variable. The, uh, this assignment will modify the global variable. And uh, here, when we declare local foo, we can also assign a value to it. For example, local foo, and it takes the value of two.
So the global one is uh, zero, but uh, we call the function, uh, the first function, uh, it gives the value one, and then the global value now is one. Then in the second function, it is local, so it does not modify the global one, and the value of the global variable is uh, still one. Now we will modify the script that generates the report by uh, adding some more uh, information to it from, from the system. And uh, we, we want to, to add, we want to add a system at time and load, uh, disk space and uh, home space. Uh, we want to display this uh, information uh, in the report. Uh, let, let's create a function for uh, for each of these information that uh, generates this information, and then we we can call this function uh, in the body of the uh, report of the HTML file. First, we will create a empty function. And uh, now we can call these functions and get uh, their outputs here in, in the body. So uh, this is the command expansion of the of the shell. So it will uh, execute this function as a command, and uh, whatever is outputted by this uh, command or, or this function will be uh, replaced as a value for for this uh, expansion. Let, let's try it. We see that we get some uh, empty because each function returns an empty, uh, does not return anything. Uh, no output, returns no output. Now, to, uh, to get the output uh, from uh, from these functions, we will use this command, the command at time, which uh, returns for how long uh, it has been, the system has been uh, running, uh, the number of users, the load average, etc. And uh, we will use the command
which will so which uh, will show the size of the root disk and how much it is used how much is available and percentage and uh, we'll use the command disk usage which uh, will show uh, how much files uh, I have in my uh, account Let's go to the function. We will use the here document. We call the command uptime here. I press tab here and uh, close the the heat document. I give you the token. Uh, let's copy these lines and paste them on the other functions and then modify them. Uh, we have uh, four lines. I type four and capital Y, and it says four lines young. We go here and type paste P. And uh, for this one, we have this space utilization. utilization and the command is uh yeah it is let's paste it here This one is home space utilization. And home. Since we are using these headers uh, here, we should uh, we should remove them from here. This uh, paragraph it is not necessary. Let's try it. And we get some uh, output. Uh, let's save it to let's save it to an HTML file. Uh, let's try it with the browser. And, uh, 
Here it is. So this is the timestamp. Uh, this is system uptime and the output from, from the command. Uh, disk space utilization and, this is, and home space utilization. So this is the lesson for today. Uh, before closing, let's see if we have any questions. So I uh, I see there are no questions. Do you have any questions? Okay, le let's. Okay, let's let's close the recording. Yes.